2023 has brought us some exciting new developments in the world of jailbreaking for the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV. You can now jailbreak your device faster than ever, no PC required. Come on, let me show you this whole new way of modding your own device in no time at all. You're guaranteed to love it. This video is based on the incredible work done by the fine folks over at vita.hacks.guide. I've donated to the guide and I hope you'll consider doing the same. They need our support and the mod scene around the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV wouldn't be the same without them. Grab your Vita or PlayStation TV, power it on, and make sure it's connected to the internet. This new way of jailbreaking your device uses the web browser. Navigate to the browser in the live area, tap on the bubble or select it with X, then tap on start or select it with X. Once you're in the browser, if your bookmark window appears, close it out with the X in the top left corner. From the browser main window, navigate to the address bar in the top left corner. You'll need to navigate to the following web address and you'll need to enter everything that you see here. HTTP colon slash slash deploy dot PSP 2 dot dev. This takes you to a website called Handloaf, the homebrew enabler loader. There's a green highlight over the text that you can move with the D-pad. For all models of PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV, move the highlight down to install Hinkaku and select it with the X button. Once you have Hinkaku installed on your system, this next step applies to all models of Vita and PlayStation TV, so long as your Vita 1000 model has an official Sony Vita memory card. For everything except the Vita 1000 with no memory card, use the D-pad to scroll the highlight down to install Vita Deploy and select it with the X button. Okay, here's the deal. If you have a Vita 1000 and you don't have a memory card, you can still use this process. In this case, rather than installing Vita Deploy directly, just scroll down one item in the menu listing to replace Near with Vita Deploy and select that with the X button. Your Vita 1000 will restart and go back to the live area. In every other instance, you can simply press the PlayStation button to go back to the live area. All right, let's empower your device to start running homebrew content. From the live area on your Vita or PlayStation TV, navigate down to the Settings bubble. Tap on the Settings bubble or select it with X, then tap on Start or select it with X to enter the Settings menu. Inside the Settings main menu, locate the listing for Henkaku Settings and select it with the X button. You should see a menu listing that allows you to enable Homebrew. Navigate down to the checkbox and either tap on it or select it with the X button. Once you have this selected, press the Circle button to go back one level in the menus to the main menu of Settings. From here, press the PlayStation button on your device or your controller, then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold circle to close and go back to the live area. Now it's time to deploy Vita Deploy. Navigate to the bubble in the live area for Vita Deploy and tap on it or select it with the X button. From here, tap on Start or select it with the X button to launch Vita Deploy. From inside Vita Deploy, we're going to install Enso on your device. That's custom firmware for your PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV. Scroll down to the listing for install a different OS and select it with the X button. The very first listing in the submenu says Quick 3.65 Install. Select that with the X button to continue. After a short online loading period, you'll be taken to a confirmation screen. Press the X button on your device to continue. You'll see a pop-up message here that says you have to wait 20 seconds to read the confirmation. Once you've read it, press the X button once again to continue. Your device will install the custom firmware just like it would any software update. Once it's done, it will restart itself and return to the live area. You're running custom firmware at this point, but there are some things to do to seal the deal. And that starts with going back to Vita Deploy to install some applications. Go back to the Vita Deploy bubble in the live area and tap on it or select it with X. Then at the Start option, tap on Start or select it with X to launch Vita Deploy. Inside the Vita Deploy main menu, there's a listing called App Downloader. Scroll down to it and select it with the X button to continue. The application you're looking for in this submenu is called ITLS Installer. You'll have to scroll down a little bit to find it, but once you do, make sure to tap on the checkbox or select it with X. Okay, once you have ITLS Installer selected, use the D-pad to scroll all the way back up to the top of the submenu. You'll see a menu listing there that says download the selected apps, select it with the X button to continue. ITLS will be downloaded to your system in the form of a VPK file or Vita package file. To install it, use the D-pad to move the green highlight down to itls.vpk and select it with the X button three times. Once to select it and twice to confirm at each prompt. Once the installation process is complete, you can press the PlayStation button on your device or controller, then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold circle to go back to the live area. To run the ITLS installer, locate the bubble in the live area, tap on it or select it with X, then tap on start or select it with X to continue. 
The installer will already be preset to install the full ITLS package. Just select it with the X button to continue. When the installation is complete, your device will be restarted and returned to the live area. All right, you've put in all this work at this point. Let's make sure that the system does not automatically download and install a system update and mess up your custom firmware. Go back down to settings and tap on the bubble or select it with X. Then tap on start or select it with X. From inside the settings main menu, locate the listing for system and tap on it or select it with X to continue. You'll see a submenu listing here called Auto Start Settings. Navigate down to it and tap on it or select it with X. The very first checkbox you see here says Download Update Files for System Software. Uncheck this box by tapping on it or selecting it with the X button. Press the PlayStation button on your device or controller and swipe from the right corner down or press and hold circle to lock in this change. Next up, let's make sure you can get safely connected to the PlayStation Network on your new firmware. Select Settings once again and tap on Start or Select it with X. From inside the Settings main menu, locate Hinkaku Settings and tap on it or select it with X. The checkboxes for Enable PSN Spoofing and Enable Version Spoofing should already be checked, but if they're not, go ahead and check them now. Once you've confirmed that they're checked, scroll down to the listing for Spoofed Version and select it with the X button or tap on it. The listing here will probably default to 3.73, but you'll want it to be 3.74. Press the square button to go back one character and select 4 from the numeric pad shown on screen. To lock this number in, you can tap on the green enter button in the bottom right corner or press the right 2 trigger on a controller. Once you have it locked in, you can press the PlayStation button on your device or controller and swipe from the right corner down or press and hold circle to go back to the live area. Okay, here's a bonus section that I didn't see covered in the guide, but I think it'd be a shame for you to miss out on this. You'll want to install Vita Shell on your system also. A quick note here, if you've got a Vita 1000, you're really going to need that memory card at this point to move forward with Vita Shell. Go over to the Vita Deploy bubble in the live area, tap on it or select it with X, and tap on Start or select it with X. Inside the Vita Deploy main menu, scroll down to the listing for App Downloader and select it with the X button. You'll see a listing here for Vita Shell. Scroll down to it and select the checkbox either by tapping on it or selecting it with X. Just like you did with ITLS, scroll all the way back up to the top of the listings, then choose Download the selected apps to continue. You'll see the previous ITLS.VPK file and you'll also see one for VitaShell.VPK. Scroll down to select it with the green highlighter, then tap on X three times to install the VPK file for VitaShell. VPK files are like Windows installer files. Once you've installed them, you don't need them anymore. You might as well save the space on your device. Highlight each of these, then select them with the square button to mark them. Press the triangle button on your device or controller and you'll open up a side cart menu. From here, use the D-pad to scroll this green highlight down three times to delete and select it with X. Then at the confirmation, select Yes with the X button to continue. Okay, once you've cleaned off these two VPK files, press the PlayStation button on your device or controller, and then swipe from the right corner down or press an old circle to go back to the live area. Okay, this next step is a boss level upgrade for your PlayStation Vita. Check this out. You can literally stream your PlayStation Vita screen to your computer over the same USB cable that came with to charge it. I'll show you how to set it up in this video.